Look, understand this. God is in his word. God lives by his word. God relates to us by his word. Everything about God is communicated to us through his word. Look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. Let's start from verse 14. 1 John 5, 14. He says, and this is the confidence. So we may have confidence. Yeah. That we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. According to his will, he heareth us. Now, that means that if we don't ask according to his will, God doesn't hear us. And John was talking to the church, right? He wasn't writing to sinners. He was talking to the church. He says, we, we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. So if we don't ask according to his will, he doesn't hear us. Then the question becomes, what is the will of God? The will of God is God's word. God's will is God's word. Because what is God's will? What is the will? A will is your mind. When a man has left his will and he has passed away, what are we looking at? We are looking at his thoughts. We are looking at the man's mind, the man's thoughts of how he wants his estate to be distributed. So when God says, this is the confidence that we have if we ask anything according to his thoughts, according to his mind. What is God's mind? The word. The word that, you see, this is why, you know, there are people that talk about, you know, this year I want God to be closer to me. I want to know God more. I want, um, I want to have the presence of God in my life. It's easy. If you are really sincere, all that is summed up in the word of God. If you don't get closer to the word, it doesn't matter how you write them as goals. You write, my goals for 2023. Then you feel it's not powerful enough, my resolutions for 2023. <laughs> it won't change anything. Because what you change, whatever you are doing, is your understanding that the presence of God is brought to us by his word. Oh God. When we get closer to the word of God, we have his presence brought to us. Look. John 15, 7. Look. This year, get closer to God's word. Have a living, liquid relationship with the word. Yeah. You know, one of those things that many times I have seen that troubles many Christians is experiences. 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 And Satan is a master at experiences. He's a master. For example, he is a Christian that is preparing for exams and then he's writing three papers. And just a week before exams, he dreams three coffins. Three coffins. And he wakes up. And those coffins, they trouble him so much. And he has three exams coming. Instead of going to the Bible, he goes to people that he feels should help him to interpret what those three coffins are. And do you know what Satan is going to do? He's going to help him. Because every time you turn away from the word, Satan accommodates you. Yes, Satan accommodates you. Satan will definitely accommodate him. And you know what? The first person Satan will bring in his life is the one that will show him the connection between those coffins and the exams. Those coffins and the exams. You say, hey, we have to pray. How many coffins did you say you saw? Three. How many papers are you writing? Three. Hey, we have to pray. 
You know that even if he left it at just that, to say we have to pray, you are going to be troubled. You will not study well. Because he has helped you to see one coffin for every exam. Now, instead of meditating on the papers, you are meditating on the coffins. You try to study what comes in your mind, the coffin has come. I rebuke you. I reject it. You are not concentrating. Satan has achieved his goal. But if you had chosen to go to the word, instead of to turn away from the word, to go to men that will help you to interpret. You see, this is why Jesus was touched. Speak the word only. 